Hello, FECO emulsification and corneal gotata. Corneal gotata are droplet-like accumulations of non-banded collagen on the posterior surface of dismant membrane. The presence of focal thickness of dismant membrane histologically named gota. The first three indices of a specular microscopy which are useful for measuring endothelial cell death. Uh, firstly, cell density, which is a measurement of cell density in millimeters square and it decreases with the age. Secondly, the coefficient uh, of variation, which is representing the degree of variation in sizes of the endothelial uh, cells. Polymegathism, which is normal when it is less than 40. A percentage of hexagonal cell, which is normal when it is above than 50%. And it indicates the variability in hexagonal cell shape over the time. The threshold number of corneal endothelial cells required to maintain corneal clarity is unknown and is likely variable. And important preoperative measurements the cell density when it is less than 1000 cells per millimeter square. There is a risk of significant corneal decompensation with cataract surgery increases and the central corneal pachymetry is, has been suggested that the pachymetry if it is less than 600 micron can do well with cataract surgery alone and the corneal pachymetry more than 640 micron may benefit from combined cataract and endothelial cell transplant. Let's back to our case, 68-year-old male with bilateral corneal gutata and bilateral moderate dense cataract. You can see the cell density for the right eye and left eye more than 1,000 cells per millimeter uh, square. And the uh, CV coefficient uh, index is uh, less than 40, which is normal, and the hexagonality is more than 50%. And you can see also the central pachymetry is less than 600 microns, so I go for cataract surgery alone. Here is my case. I'm trying to show you that gotata at the posterior surface of the cornea under the microscope through the red reflex. You can see the dots on the back of the cornea. Here it's very clear by high magnification. You can see these white dots at the posterior surface of the cornea through the red reflex at the uh, area of the pupil. I started my surgery with 2.2 clear corneal incision, then injecting dispersive OVD, which is very important to protect the endothelium of the cornea. Then I did the capsule rixis. It is a beautiful capsule rix is about 5.5 millimeter well centered then slightly empty the antechamber from the viscoelastic you can see a beautiful wave during the hydro dissection uh, injecting dispersive again rotate the nucleus to be sure that the hydro dissection is um, complete then doing the pico emulsification mechanical uh, Chopping of this cataract is important to decrease the amount of ultrasound energy. I'm trying to emulsify this cataract as far as away from the back of the cornea, uh, periodically applying of viscoelastic dispersive one uh, to protect the endothelium of the cornea is a crucial step to protect the cornea during the surgery and here is the last piece of this cataract. Now it's the time to removing the cortex using the bimanual irrigation aspiration. Also, it is important to avoid hitting the back of the cornea with the irrigated fluid while removing the cortex to decrease the stress on the corneal endothelium. Now the cortex was removed, then injecting a cohesive OVD to form the capsular bag and implanting a single piece hydrophobic IOL. Also, it is important to avoid the trifocal in those cases and to avoid the uh, 
hydrophilic IOL or silicone IOL in those patients, then doing gentle stromal hydration for the paracentesis and for the main phacoencygen. Here is also I'm trying to show you the gotata through the red reflex. You can see this is pitting on the posterior back of the cornea through the red reflex. It is very clear with high magnification under the microscope. Here you can see this is white dots through the red reflex. It is very clear. Here you can see it's like um, pitting on the posterior back of the cornea. Now the end of the surgery, injecting uh, myocol and intracameral antibiotic no leak important tips patient counseling and all anterior segment intraocular procedures tend to cause slight loss in the corneal endothelium and it's better to perform cataract surgery at earlier stages in fox patients less dense cataract requires less ultrasound energy and less circulating fluid and less stress on the corneal endothelium Mechanical method such as chopping to disassemble the nucleus, less ultrasound energy and avoid older techniques such as divide and conquer. Using low flow parameters as high flow creates currents against the endothelial cells in uh, inducing damage. Start with dispersed viscoelastic with repeated injection during the surgery or use soft shell technique. Due to the compromised cornea, better to implant monofocal IOLs instead, uh, instead of multifocal IOLs and placing a suture would be better than excessive corneal stromal hydration if incisions don't seal securely. During the bust op, it is important to include the medication like steroids and non-steroid inflammatory uh, drugs to control the inflammation, antibiotics for infection prophylaxis, hypertonic saline to aid the, with corneal clarity. Prolonged post-op course can be expected, however, most patients with reasonable preoperative corneal pachymetry and endothelial cell counts will recover their baseline level of corneal clarity and good vision. Here is the patient on the next day after the surgery. You can see the cornea is very clear and it's very beautiful, no corneal edema. And here you can see also the cornea after one week. It is also very clear and the vision of the patient improved to be 2025. And thank you for watching.